Hey guys, Prickly Hedgehog here. Uh, today we'll do a brief overview of the Fnatic uh, Club Sport, the V1. They have just come out with a, a V2. Oh, it's been out for a little while now, and they sent me an email saying, do I want to upgrade with a discount uh, that base unit there, and I uh, I declined because I didn't have the money. Uh, but uh, we'll do a quick overview of this, and mainly the, uh, the GT3 wheel here from BMW, which mimics the... Uh, uh, the real thing in a GT3 car. Uh, my voice is kind of cracking up here, so excuse me while I slurp on coffee at the same time. I apologize for the lack of professionalism there. Um, so, yeah, what do you get? Well, why, why would you buy this? Uh, well, uh, if you have the money, it's uh, definitely worth doing. Um, uh, I have the uh, the whole setup now. I, I started off with the pedals because I had the G20, uh, G27 excuse me, from Logitech which in itself is actually a very good product, but the, the pedals feel a little plasticky, they're a little light, they were moving around on me, and uh, I wanted something a little more robust. And the uh, this whole unit here, normally I wear uh, racing shoes when I'm racing because they uh, give me a little more grip and uh, mimic the, kind of that racing feel. Uh, and uh, they're, because they're small shoes, they're, they're quite tight, they, um, they help you uh, uh, find your pedals uh, more easily because your uh, standard shoe I guess is or, you know like a tennis shoe or something is a little bit wider and they tend to get in the way so so uh, so these are all um, pretty much metal construction the uh, the unit connects to the computer kind of via a, um, uh, a printer USB cable and uh, there is software for it you can adjust uh, the sensitivity and strength, if you like, of the braking uh, feel. Uh, the only drawback I would have, uh, the only drawback I've noticed, and this is not really a criticism of uh, uh, Fnatic, it's more of a, uh, I guess, uh, shortcoming of the way that I have them um, set up. Uh, but under heavy braking it can, it can tilt, and it can also, on the carpet here that I have, which is um, not the best carpet. It can uh, shift around on you to, on on you a little bit when you are doing, say, uh, throttle throttle blipping for downshifting. Uh, it can move around a little bit on you. So so just be aware of that. Uh, ideally, the unit should be mounted on a um, um, you know racing cockpit <clears throat> or similar. But uh, I don't have the uh, uh, the money for that, and I certainly don't have the uh, authorization from. Um, my wife, <laughs> she uh, she's gonna put the kibosh on that pretty quick. But ideally, yeah, you'd want to want to mount them in some way so that you can really get that uh, uh, precise uh, braking feel. But I this is a huge improvement over, say, the um, uh, G27 wheels, which you know they're not bad. Let's be real, that it's a it's a you know a fraction of the price of the Fnatic uh, uh, equipment. But uh, they do not deliver the same. Um, feel, if you like, of, uh, of this particular product, and, you know, you can spend a pretty penny on some of these, um, on these units, uh, right up to kind of things that mimic what, what you'd find in a Formula 1 car or an actual GT3 racing car, which, you know, it's done to get ridic ridiculous, but let's be real, it's also kind of cool. So, you know, for a couple hundred bucks, this isn't a bad compromise. The uh, clutch has a cam on it, which kind of mimics, you can feel the, the you can feel the clutch actually, uh, uh, push in and, and lose that um, resistance when you get past that certain point and then as you release it you can feel again it, it gets, you get that bite point which you would have in, a, in an actual um, uh, vehicle with a clutch so that, that's kind of nice uh, I don't use that unfortunately as much as I would like because most of the vehicles I'm driving uh, have uh, uh, semi-automatic gearboxes at least in iRacing and uh, similar titles so I don't get the same um, uh, benefit out of it, but when you do use it, you know, it, it really is quite cool. So, uh, I, you know, I guess if I was thinking actually it maybe a fix for this, apart from mounting it, would be if, if uh, Fnatic actually lengthened the um, uh, the uh, the width, if you like, of, of this unit so that it was more stable, So, or if, say if there was more uh, uh, stand, if you like, or structure behind the, the pedals, so that when you were pushing down um, the unit wouldn't uh, be prone to, to tipping forward. So, but you know, whatever. I'm not using it. Uh, perhaps on a different surface, it would be a little different. But whatever. Okay. So, all right. Second slip of, uh, or third slip of coffee. All right. Here we go. So, excuse me. 
So, uh, as I said before, these are separate units. Uh, the um, There's actually four pieces of equipment. Um, so we've just gone through the pedals. Now the, the base unit, this is the V1, as I said before, the V2 has come out. Um, it's got a very, very powerful motor in it. Uh, and I, I should stress that, that that should be a warning too, because uh, I was goofing around one day. I forget. I don't know if I was driving iRacing. racing. I forget which which game I was simulating. Um, in but uh, the uh, I was goofing around with one hand while I was uh, maybe shifting or I don't know what I was doing. But anyway, I remember getting a very sharp pain in the in the wrist because I crashed into a wall and the steering wheel jerked with enough force that it actually uh, uh, almost injured me. And I thought, gosh, that could be kind of dangerous if you had children playing with it. Uh, obviously, it comes with a warning about that. Uh, you do not want children uh, anywhere near this, uh, or people who have maybe not so much upper body strength. This is for um, um, older teens and adults who have the strength to, um, uh, to control the unit. So just a word of warning there if anyone uh, thinks this would be suitable for a, for a kid. Uh, not without strict supervision and not, or not without toning down the, uh, the strength of the force feedback, I would think. So... You know, that's the only time I've ever had an issue with it when it was just a kind of a freak accident. Like I say, I wasn't really paying attention. I, I didn't have both hands on the wheel, and it, it just happened to coincide with me kind of um, turning the corner, and I, and I wasn't really, like I said, paying attention. I lost control, hit the, hit the wall, so I don't normally do, but, you know, we're all humans. So, so uh, inside you've got two fans, either side. Uh, this, this stuff here is metal. This is great, basically a giant heat sink, which helps keep the whole thing cool. Uh, you can see one motor up here. You can see, obviously, whoops, a little feedback there. You've got uh, uh, up to 900 degrees of rotation here, and uh, which is really awesome. The uh, unit, when you turn it on and off, or at least, excuse me, when you turn it on, it will uh, uh, self-center and check the calibration there, which is nice, and let you know um, that it's uh, centered. And uh, with these uh, uh, powerful motors, you can see inside, you can see the bands and things. So there's a screw feed through here as well. It's all attached to this big metal, I guess, X-frame looking thing. Um, this whole front here is metal. Uh, these pieces are through that are bolted onto, obviously, um, aluminium. So the, the unit is very, very well constructed. It's, it's specifically designed for sim racers who want to get the best out of their uh, racing experience. So. If you have any doubts about the quality of the componentry, or if you're not sure that this is the unit for you, but you're interested, um, just go ahead and buy it. Uh, you won't have any regrets. I, I give it the product a 10 out of 10, uh, certainly over any sort of generic product that I uh, have uh, raced with previous um, experience with or have raced previously. <clears throat> I can only comment really on the Logitech products. I've had a couple of theirs, and they've, they've been really good for the price. So. It's not really. It's not. You're not comparing apples with apples here. It's not really fair to make a direct comparison. But if you're looking to step up from uh, and move into something a little bit more uh, high tech and uh, uh, something that really, like I said, mimics that uh, sim racing experience or the racing experience through simulation, then this is the way to go. Um, the uh, steering wheel connects to a central column here, just like you would in a real racing car. Basically, you you pull this uh, bolt uh, slider back, or if you like, or the slider that uh, holds the um, uh, the little locks in place, releases the spring, and the whole um, uh, wheel can be popped off. Which uh, again is great if you are sharing the uh, desk with uh, with your wife who wants to use uh, for office work. Uh, you can put the whole unit away without getting yelled at, <clears throat> as long as you remember to do that. Um, so, uh, the uh, GT3 BMW wheel, oosh, really awesome. Uh, gosh, fully programmable. You can see there's a swag of buttons on here, um, and uh, they're all they're really solid buttons. You know, these these ones here are plastic, um, as you can see. But look at look at the bolts here. This this whole piece through here is metal. Um, so this is the, uh, the the primary structure of the unit. The base um, bit behind it here, where the uh, uh, LED reader is, is, is plastic, um, but this primary uh, stuff on the front here is all metal. And uh, aside from these buttons, and I use the yellow one for my um, pit limiter and my red one here, I, sh I could use it as a starter or something like that. It'd say battery on and then start. I actually use that one because it's convenient for my um, my thumb, and that uh, I use for my my radio. And I think I use the starter and stuff over here. But uh, there are a couple of little um, hat switches here, if you like, uh, similar to what you'd find on a um, on a high, excuse me, on a high-end joystick for uh, flight simulators. Uh, this is a four-way uh, switch here, which you can use for again, it's programmable for whatever you want. And then it also turns as well. So for racing, that would be awesome for say um, ABS control, even or even a fuel uh, fuel flow rate. 
uh, say in a long distance race where you needed to adjust the power rate or the flow of the fuel to the engine. So. Um, here's another field of view um, hat over here, if you like. Uh, again, you know, it can be reached with the thumb. I use that when my track IR is um, um, not able to be used. I get a lot of light through one of my uh, windows here, and it screws up uh, track IR. And I've made the mistake of uh, um, even with the blind down, thinking that I was okay, and it's it's gone haywire in the game, and it's not a good result. So um, when I have that um, off, I can use this as a field of view. Which gives me kind of a you know a 180 if you like or a, yeah just a kind of 90 degree excuse me uh, uh, head turn either either side which is great when you're in traffic so um, um, really really fantastic to be able to program these uh, these buttons for whatever you want and some of these ones down the bottom here are a little harder to reach so these uh, these would be non-essential uh, kind of functions uh, primarily it's going to be your uh, letting other drivers know why you crash into them uh, and apologizing profusely or, or yelling at somebody who just took you out off the track uh, the field of view here or, and maybe this uh, ABS function or brake balance function whatever you want to use it for um, obviously um, prior to uh, um, racing you can also control the way that the the, uh, the unit responds um, in game um, you've got uh, five s setting switches here as you can save the profile to um, and then with the, that's with that turny thing there, um, turny switch, and then you can uh, go through the sensitivity, uh, you've got your force feedback, uh, your shock absorbers, I think the ABS there, uh, the linear, I think there's a dead zone there, uh, I forget what that one is now, uh, or is that your force feedback, I can't remember, anyway, spring rate, dampers, and there's uh, back to the settings again. So, so this can be uh, adjusted prior to uh, actual um, gaming, um, and you can set up uh, how the the unit responds to uh, inputs from the game, so which is really cool. Uh, I really enjoy that that fact that you can um, really control the uh, the the uh, power, if you like, or the response of the unit to in-game um, uh, programming. So again, it makes uh, this wheel uh, and at least this this uh, uh, this unit. Uh, really infinitely adjustable and uh, very very special uh, the shifters here are also also metal uh, no plastic crap here really really good give, give a very solid uh, feel to them and uh, no dramas I've used uh, I'm primarily using these ones I do have a, uh, a shifter on order which I'd like for the GT3 cars but you know whatever most of the uh, modern racing cars these days are uh, uh, paddle adjusted um, and uh, obviously that uh, allows for very quick uh, gear changes. Uh, what I have it mounted on is, you, again, you can buy this from Fnatic. Um, it wasn't too expensive. This is really heavy gauge steel. This this thing will not break on you. The unit is mounted on this. There's a, a small hinge in the back that you can tighten off and adjust where you want um, the wheel to be angled. Uh, I have it uh, kind of more on a, on a horizontal just because it's on a desk. But, you know, you can mess around with it whatever you want. Have you had it in a, a gaming cockpit or what have you? So this 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 is pretty fantastic, um, and uh, it's secured underneath to the desk with these really hefty um, uh, locks, if you like, and uh, you can really crank them up so that, that this it's not going to come off. You know the desk shakes around, but this this remains uh, firmly planted to the desk, which a lot of other systems I've noticed that's one of the complaints. Uh, there is a place to uh, these on the left hand side I have here the um, this is on the wrong side for me now but uh, there is a place for a shifter to be attached to and these are all um, uh, locked up with uh, um, uh, an allen key or an allen wrench whatever you want to call it um, and you can move these things back and forth and, and, and set up your other um, shifter attachment to or you can buy uh, a similar unit to what the what the main unit is mounted to and attach your shifter that way to the desk so uh, we'll see how that goes when that arrives um, so yeah again back to the very beginning 10 out of 10 man uh, don't uh, don't hesitate to buy this if you have the money and you're looking for for a um, product that's going to improve your racing experience your sim experience this is the way to go uh, there's no question about it I, I really really enjoy it it gives me a lot of pleasure uh, it's lasted really well. Everything feels uh, solid. I, I feel like I'm more in control of my vehicle. There's less surprises. The force feedback is excellent. You really do feel much more through your wheel, and it, and it uh, also feels like it's uh, um, 
uh, product that's going to last. It just it feels more realistic. It's not going to break down on you. Uh, it uh, eliminates that kind of plasticky feel. It really does give you uh, more of a precise vehicle-like uh, experience. So, uh, again, if you're having any hesitations or you're interested in buying this product and you're not sure, uh, go ahead and do it because you won't regret it. So. Uh, I hope that helps. Just a, a very quick overview of the product and the, the kinds of things it can do. Uh, maybe I'll get a short video going here of uh, it in action so that you can kind of see that just to, to kind of experience the maybe the noises and things that it makes. Uh, overall, I, I really would rate this as, uh, as an excellent product and uh, as it should be for, for the price. So I hope this helps, guys, and uh, I hope uh, everyone's having fun out there in the sim racing world. Cheers.